Hello, Booktube. As you can see, I have a guest. <laughs> this is Michael K. Vaughn from the channel, Michael K. Vaughn. <laughs> and unbelievably, despite the fact that we've been responding to each other's comments and content forever, I think this is the first time we've ever appeared on camera together. Almost. We did on uh, the first book track for the first did for Vin's, yeah for Vin's first book track video yeah we 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 appeared together there well you, I, you don't remember because you did all the talking but <laughs> it's quite possible that i did all the talk i seem to be doing all the talking for book track 2022 as well <laughs> yeah you're doing a good job for that thanks even though there's precious little to talk about this month <laughs> precious little precious little <laughs> But uh, most of our interaction on BookTube has been Epic Comic Book Wednesdays. And uh, for those of you who are, who are just tuning into this video and don't know any of its context, the, uh, on Epic Comic Book Wednesdays, uh, Michael picks a subject or a comic book or something drawn by Herb Trimpey, and we talk about him on his channel and me on mine. Uh, and just this last Wednesday, he picked an enormous topic, something that we could go on for 10 hours about, which is comic books represented in plastic media on TV and on film. Uh, and we did film, we did, we did a video a piece on film that I don't know about you, I could have gone on for four hours about film. I could go on for four hours just about Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. <laughs> just that it's one be, movie. It's better that you don't. <laughs> uh, but this is the second part of that. This is comic books on TV. Mm hmm and I'm dying to know, I'm sure everybody else is too, what your comic book on TV origin story is. Can I take well, a the, stab at it? I'm yeah, assuming, go ahead, yeah. I'm assuming it was uh, The Flash. The Flash television show? Yeah. No, I go, I oh. go back way farther than that. You do? Oh, yeah. Wow. One of the no. favorite uh, indoor sports of people who, the, the four people mm -hmm. who watch our comic book videos is waiting for us to disagree. But I have a feeling that we're going to agree on a lot when it comes to comic books on TV. Possibly. We'll see. Now, if it's not The Flash, now I'm wondering if it's Super Friends. Yeah, well, The Flash, you're talking about the 90s. Yes. It was, it was like 90, something like that. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, no, my first time watching a superhero television show, you know, it probably was the Super Friends, those cartoons. It was probably the Super Friends. But the one I remember watching... The cartoon I remember watching was Spider-Man, the 60s Spider-Man show that was rerun forever. <laughs> we, I watched that a lot. And that's when I remember really liking. But the first thing that I remember ever watching on television that was superhero anything was Adam West's Batman. Oh, right. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Which, which was in reruns when I was a little kid. And of course, I took Batman very seriously when I was a little kid. Yeah. It was Adam West Batman and the old Superman show, which was rerun on weekends. So those are the first two that I watched. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That goes back almost to the beginning. Mm hmm. So I've, I've got to ask, have you revisited either one of those? And if so. Well, I. Adam West Batman, not too much, which kind of surprises me. But I haven't seen that show in a long time, decades probably. Uh, although I remember it fondly for what it was. Uh, but the Superman, I've got every episode on DVD. I've got the full set really? of the original Superman show. Because I have good memories of that show because every once in a while, our, one of our local shows back, one of our local stations back in the eighties when they had independently owned television stations, they would have these whole weekends where they just play every episode of Superman back to back. It would be the Superman marathon. They would do this once in a while and they do Twilight Zone once in a while. They take these old TV shows and they just run episodes and episodes all weekend long. Did the marathons ever involve the Fleischer cartoons? The old Max Fleischer cartoons of Superman? Or did you come to those as an adult? I came to those as an adult. I didn't see those until I was probably 30. Hmm. Yeah. And you haven't oh. revisited. I revisited the uh, the Adam West Batman just a few years ago. 
are really, yeah. really remarkable stuff. It, it, it totally depends on who the guest star is. Some of the guest stars have just wandered in. They were doing a show for Alfred Hitchcock or whatever. They wandered in for an extra $200 paycheck. They have no idea what's going on. But some of the guest villains, I mean, are really nailing the comedy of it. Just uh, Julie Newmar, especially her, her Catwoman is just this, this sultry, complete psychopath. <laughs> it's, you, know, you didn't know the word back then, but she's just, she has the, the complete lack of any kind of human morality that all the Batman villains had. <laughs> so, and boy, does Adam West respond. That guy had perfect comic timing but only with the right partner. Mm. He's just, he's totally inert. If you get, if you, you, know, you bring in Victor Bono as King Tut, he neither one of them has any idea what to do. <laughs> I remember King Tut, yeah. Or Vincent Price as the egghead. <laughs> I found that, uh, I don't know what it is, mnemonic, mnemonically or whatever, but if you do, what Egghead always did in his Batman episodes, which is to turn any word that starts with a soft E into the word egg. So exponential, exaggerating. If you do that without announcing what you're doing, without announcing that you're doffing the hat to an old Batman episode, normal human beings at dinner or on the subway or in a conversation become instantly enraged. <laughs> It's infuriating. Really? I'll have to give that a try. It must be the origin story of Egghead. <laughs> Wouldn't that turn you to super villainy? <laughs> it might. It's something about it drives people insane, even faster than referring to yourself in the third person. <laughs> well, I'll do both. But, okay, so, so reruns of Batman and the old George Reeves Superman. Mm -hmm. But that was as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming you weren't a comic book reader as a kid. Not that young. Oh, I was pretty much always a comic book oh, reader. Oh, no because, kidding. Oh. Just because they were around, you know. So as soon as I learned how to read, comic books were around. Because my stepfather bought comic books. My brother bought comic books. So comic books were just always around the house. And so naturally, they became one of the first things that I would read because mm -hmm. they were there. And so, and a lot of those comics were, well, they were mostly Marvel comics, actually. And uh, a few Batmans and Supermans right in the mix. The so oh, you, yeah. would you be one of those, I've met, I've met many, many people in my life who say, essentially, Stan Lee taught them their vocabulary. In a big part, yeah. Uh, oh, that's incredible. In a, in a big way, that's true. Because I remember writers out there in the world, that's true for, and they just won't admit it. Michael Chabon's yeah. the only one who admits it. <laughs> All the others deny it completely. But I wonder, I wonder if you got Jonathan Franzen really drunk, <laughs> would he admit? <laughs> okay, but so the, they were around. They were the yeah. first things that you read when you learned to read. But eventually, the light bulb comes on, right? And you realize what you're reading. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it's not just furniture anymore. It's a separate kind of reading. So my next question for you is, what was the first comic book product that you saw on the small screen where you knew what it was where suddenly you wanted it to be right if you know oh, where i okay where i saw it right because th those batman yeah. and superman reruns if you're six or seven years old you wouldn't yeah. care one way or another but there well, comes plus, a point. Plus, plus i saw those first right those are those those were my introductions to those oh, characters for the comics yeah and that's pro that's true for spider-man probably as well I'm sure I saw the cartoon before oh, wow. I, I, I read the comics. Uh, but the other way around was later. But, but by then, because there wasn't too much on TV other than cartoons between Batman and Superman until much later. Because I don't remember too much in the 80s. The only thing that <laughs> the only candidates that would have been likely if you'd been a kid watching TV would have been the double header of uh, Shazam and the Mighty Isis. That's true, the, the, the Saturday morning thing. And I didn't watch too much of that. Um, Shazam never captured my imagination for some reason, and neither did Isis, although I remember them. The mighty Isis apparently caught no one's attention. <laughs> Even in the midst of, you know, yeah. of, of feminist revival, she's been completely ignored. I'm assuming that's a copyright thing. Could be. Uh, Otherwise, I mean, she, if she was run by the same, you know, live production company that did Shazam, 
then that's the broad umbrella of DC Comics. So why isn't, you know, why isn't she in Black Adam? Why isn't she a huge part of DC continuity? I don't, I don't have any idea why that would be true, especially since the, the half hour show made it clear that she's incredibly powerful as opposed to Electro Woman and Dinah Girl, <laughs> which is probably a little too niche for you. <laughs> that I've only heard of. I've never seen Electro Woman and Dino Girl. So then by the time you got to, I, I'm eventually going to get back around to the Flash, to the live action Flash, yeah. the first live action Flash. By the time you got to that, you were an old hand at this. At yeah, because by, by then, by the nine, by 90, you know, then I was way, I had become way into comic books, probably in the mid eighties. That's when I really got into it as opposed to just reading whatever was lying around. But as growing, when you start growing up you start picking up more and more and then they start becoming important to you, these characters. And yeah. so by the eighties, I- The 70s Spider-Man has almost yeah. no relation to comic book continuity. You, no. And, and I don't hear you mentioning the Hulk. Lou Ferrigno's the Hulk. With, with, I like the Hulk. Yeah, I like the Hulk. And that was Although, a, that was an attempt to introduce yeah. more Marvel characters, right? You you got a, a little bit more Marvel characters at the behest of Stan Lee, who wanted all the Marvel characters to be in the Hulk. <sighs> oh yeah, that's right. Because they went through a period where they did the TV movies and they came, brought on Daredevil in his pajamas and uh, a really bad Thor. A really remember- bad Thor. Yes, a Thor yeah. who's a Nordic Viking. He's just That's a right. hammer throwing Nordic Viking. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but later, so by 90, by the 90s, they were different. It wasn't, comic books weren't just things that were hanging around anymore. And no. so comic book adaptations weren't just whatever's on anymore. Right. By, mm-hmm. by, by the 90s, I cared and I knew, because I was reading everything by then. At some point in the 80s, I was just, if it came out in comic book form, I probably was reading it. Mm-hmm or was familiar with it or knew about it at least. I saw it. So by then I had a pretty good good grasp of the characters. But also by then I was kind of used to any kind of adaption on screen of any sort, not really being too close to the comic book. I never expected it ever to get too close. Yeah. You know, Um, they were always, Massive Young people differences. watching the comic book movies today won't understand that. Yeah. The, the idea, the attitude that we had at the time was, uh, we'll be lucky if it's 10% close. Right. They don't, uh, that is not understandable now because now you can, you will, I mean, the, the, produ- the showrunners will destroy the material, but they don't have to. They could make it right. exactly the same if they wanted to. <laughs> they destroyed for other reasons, reasons that we didn't, there was not on anybody's mind 50 years ago. <laughs> But what about that first Flash series? Just to stop me from obsessing about it. Did you watch it? Did you like it? Oh, yeah, I watched it. It was on for a year, right? It was one season. Am I I right? One season, yeah. I think it was one season. I watched it. It was okay. Uh, (laughs) I I can't, for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe you can tell me. I view it as a watershed. Why is it? Is it because it was the, the best special effects that could be brought to bear at the time and also was serious? I liked, I liked the seriousness of it. Seriousness of it. There, was, there were a lot of things I liked about it. Um, it. When I was watching it, you know, at the time, I didn't realize that it was any kind of watershed. I thought it was in an entertaining cool. and it was a good show. I didn't think it would last because these things just, wouldn't you know and it didn't looking back though i can see that but you know there were a lot of you know it was a major superhero character the only reason it was on was because of batman and batman the movie you mean batman the movie and the success of batman the movie yeah um and there were some there were some little bits of superhero stuff that would show up on television that didn't last very long uh what am i thinking of i can't remember any of their names at this time but you know there was like stuff in this and the films there was dark man and there was stuff like that stuff that was kind of inspired by batman 
I, I remember less yeah. about the Flash, that first Flash TV series than I do about the controversy around it in the comic book press. But uh, maybe you weren't maybe you weren't reading Amazing Heroes at the time I was I was doing. I was heavily involved in Amazing Heroes at the time. And Andy Mangles caused and he's still writing today, caused an enormous stir because he followed the star of the Flash TV show, John Wesley's ship into a series of gay bars in Los Angeles. And that was the, just the end of the world. Back, back then, it was the end of the because world. Because it was 90, yeah. Now it would be, you know, it'd be a, a, a scandal if he didn't. If he went into a country dive bar, then it would be, what? <laughs> uh, that's, that's the largely the thing I remember. For me, that period it sticks out for the adventures of Superboy. Which I didn't watch at the time. No? Which I didn't watch. Oh, no. my God. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't what? watch... Were you a Marvel fanboy even then? You know, to tell, to be honest, around that time, I was very much so a Marvel fanboy. Yeah. Coming out, coming through the 70s and the 80s, Marvel was where it was at for me. Oh. I liked certain DC characters, but I wasn't as invested in them as I became later. For some reason, I became more invested in DC characters in my 20s. Uh, early 20s, mid 20s, around there. So have you gone back to the adventures of Superboy? I, you know what? I haven't. Do they, haven't. Do they even exist on DVD? I, that That's was, the thing. It was Are the adventures of Superboy. I don't know. Yeah. It was right around then that, that the whole messy, incredibly tangled legal trouble about DC using Superboy as a title or as a character. Did that, did that leap off from the television show? Yeah, at least in part it did because they haven't been able to do it ever since. They haven't been able to, they, they can informally call characters in the comics by that name, but they can't use it as a title. They can't use it as a you know, trademark thing at all. And they can't bring it back to TV. They thumb their noses at the whole, at the whole courtroom by having a very successful seven season series about Superboy without ever calling him Superboy. That's Smallville. Mm -hmm. the, the Adventures of Superboy is the last time they could do it. Otherwise, there would have been a Superboy movie by now. At least one. I mean, it's got all the elements that you need. <laughs> but that, that show was they recast after the first season. That never happened. Yeah, I remember John, that. Yeah. John Haynes Newton got the boot because he, uh, he kept driving while drunk. And the studio thought, I mean, he had it under control. He's a smart guy, a talented actor. But the studios had, the studio executives got together and had one meeting and said, what about if he does this when it's not on the lot? Look at the headline. Superboy drunk. Right. That would ruin us. That, that absolutely cannot happen. So they, they recast him with somebody even, he was too old for Superboy. They recast him with Jerry Christopher, who's even older. <laughs> Could easily have been Superman. But you missed those episodes. I'm going back. Yeah, and I remember thinking that when I, when I saw, because I would see it around, because it was on TV, but I didn't sit there and watch it. Uh, but I remember thinking this guy's too old to be super yeah. like, This is not super. They could just make a Superman TV show, yeah. which is what I wanted. You know, well, I would have watched a they Superman keep going TV. around it. They keep yeah. they kept going around it. They did yeah. Smallville. They did Lois and Clark, but not at the I think the directive from on high was we don't want you explicitly competing with anything we might be doing in the, in the theaters. So. We don't want anybody asking which is the real Superman or anything right. like that. They, they seem to be over that now. And that's, that's the right way. They should be over that. Uh, well, they should be, but, but are they? Because I think they, well, have the Flash, they have the Flash movie coming out, but I think this is the last season of The Flash, right? Aren't, yeah. they, aren't yeah. they canceling all of those Arrowverse shows? I think they're canceling all of them. Yeah, so except all for uh, uh, Lois and Superman. Lois Lane and yeah. Superman. And Tyler Hoechlin yeah. will never be a big screen Superman. He's fantastic on the small screen. But they, somebody seems to have made their peace with there being more than one Superman, uh, which is great. I mean, that's the way to go. I don't think fans care. You know? No, no, fans understand, I think. They do. They'll have their favorites. Yeah. But look at, I mean, the, the, uh, the movie that you took behind the woodshed and, and full, filled full of birdshot, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home that I, I could hear the howls of your viewers from all the way over here in Boston. <laughs> but look at that. That's three different Spider-Man on screen. Nobody cared. People loved it. Well, people all wanted it. You know, they, 
that was a big nostalgia fest. And I was happy to see all those Spider-Men back. Uh, I was I was happy to see that. Just, you know, it was a crap movie. I mean, other than that. <laughs> it was also a little bit of a rare thing, right? Because T- Toby Maguire, especially Andrew Garfield, they could, they're still within the age range to be playing the character. And here they are guest starring as alternate characters. That was, uh, I, I firmly believe that the animated movie Into the Spider-Verse opened the door for that. <laughs> uh, I, what about that? Are you a fan of Into the Spider-Verse? That's, yeah, that's a good Spider-Man movie. It might be the best Spider-Man movie. Um, I'm surprised we haven't gotten more of that kind of thing. You yeah, know? Me too. Me too. Ah, yeah. yeah. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much that could be done that can't be done otherwise. But, and I can't, can't help but think that it would be less expensive, but that's the big that's the big screen. We want to stick with the small screen. And the, the 30 minutes of geeking out about the adventures of Superboy that I was thinking about, we can't do because you never thought. <laughs> they recast Superboy. They recast Lex Luthor. Once Jerry Christopher came on board, they also got rid of a lot of writers and had the writers who were on board up their game. So you got better stories, including alternate reality stories where Superboy meets an old Superman with the white spit curl Mm -hmm. (laughs) played by Ron Ely, the actor who played Tarzan and Doc Savage. He plays an an old Superman who has always sucking on a lollipop. And it's an amazingly good episode. And and, uh, they got Sherman Howard, an actor who never got his big break. Boy, is he great. He is so great. But he never got his big break. And they got him to play Lex Luthor. And he did a much better job than whoever they got the first time. The, the, still remember the, the, I was watching one episode where he's Lex Luthor is once again trying to get some innocent dupe to kill Superman on his behalf and once again the innocent dupe has an immoral awakening at the last minute oh I can't do this I must hide this kryptonite <laughs> and uh, Sherman Howard ad-libs a line in that episode who do I have to get to kill this guy squeaky from <laughs> I howled with laughter when I heard that because that went right over the heads of the kids that were the nominal audience for the show <laughs> Uh, but where where does that bring us? So after Adventures of Superboy, oh, I know where it brings us. And it dovetails perfectly with Into the Spider-Verse. Surely we must talk about the animated DC cartoons. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, By any measure. the Batman, highway. the animated series. Yeah, and the Adventures of Superman. But, I mean, surely, it, I, li- I mentioned at the beginning that our our viewers love to watch a spat over on Epic Comic Book Wednesday, but surely here we agree completely. But those were great. Yeah, those were great. Those were great shows. That Batman show was probably the best Batman show. Uh, and the Superman show was excellent. The Superman cartoon was an excellent Superman cartoon. Yeah. They were like cool little Superman movies each episode. And they were all very well done. Uh, yeah. I liked them. Yeah, good, I like good voice actors, uh, that kind of mixture of, mm-hmm. you know, 40s retro look, but with technology, people use computers, people use lasers, but it all looks, it's very much an homage, I think, especially the Superman one, to the Max Fleischer cartoons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. You know, no, but nobody looks human. Everybody has exaggerated features, especially Superman and Batman, too, with that, that huge, you know, lantern jaw of his <laughs> with great voice actors. Um, although the the Adventures of Superman was uh, Tim Daly, right from yep. the sitcom <laughs> Wings, it right, wasn't right. Uh, what's his name uh, George Newworth. It was no. Tim Daly in the show, in the in the original uh, in the original cartoon, right? But for yeah. uh, like for instance, uh, the quintessence of uh, superheroes on the small screen for me, other than George Reeves as Superman, would be the Justice League. Right. That's not Tim Daly. That's George Newworth, or is that his name, or something like that? I'm I'm, I'm blanking on the name. I don't think that's Tom, that's Tim Daly in that show. Uh, but it's great either way. Did you did you uh, watch these things from the beginning? Was I it, watched? Were they in I time watched, for you to know what they were and care about what they were? I watched Batman from the beginning because I remember when that premiered. It was an evening show, right? It was prime time. Yeah. 
And the first episode was with Man Bat, wasn't it? I think so. I'm, I'm almost certain wow. it was Man Bat. Oh, wow. And uh, I loved it. I loved the style of it. And that was old timey animation in that first Batman show. Yeah. Yeah, was, if you look at it now, I mean, if you're accustomed yeah. to, for instance, Batman Beyond yeah. uh, or the Batman, the 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 later yeah. cartoon about Batman's first early years, if you're accustomed to the animation rate of those cartoons, these yeah. old Batman and Superman ones will look primitive. Right, it was. And yeah, if you look at them now, at the time, it was really cool. I love the style of them. It's like they had that dark look. They had, they, they, took some of the Burton movies dark look, but they did it with style and it felt more right to the character. The character felt right. The character of Batman, probably more right than I've seen Batman any other place, probably outside of a comic book or even in a comic book. Now the Batman of the animated series felt like Batman. Yeah. Like this is, this is the character this is what this character is about yeah same thing with the the movie yeah. mask of the phantasm but we're not right. talking about movies uh but the, the mask of the phantasm too was just it was that formula only on the big screen and boy oh boy did i love that movie <laughs> boy oh boy not just for making me laugh um although it does <laughs> in the final fight scene with the joker when when the joker is groping around and there's i think a gigantic ball peen hammer but also a giant salami roll, and he grabs the salami roll, to try it, of course, because he's the Joker. But also that that for drama, that fantastic moment when uh, Bruce Wayne puts on the mask for the first time in front of Alfred. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it, far for, Alfred has been sarcastic the whole time, and he's stunned. He's stunned by what he. It's, it transforms the person that he knew. That's just just a fantastic moment. <laughs> but that's the movies. The cartoon did a lot of that too. The, the it's the movies, out. but it was it was from the cartoon. Yeah, it was it was based on the TV cartoon. I don't really separate it too much, even though it was in the theater. But uh, yeah, that was a hell of a cartoon. The Batman was, and the original series uh, of Superman cartoons was too. And I appreciated that they got Superman right in that cartoon. Uh, and I liked the Justice League too. Um, I didn't see all the iterations of that show. The Justice League, because by then in my life I was doing other things, and I never got back to it. You know, see, this is that, one of the advantages of not having a life is that I can just yeah. keep up with all of this stuff. <laughs> I just I can keep up with everything. So. It's 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 a definite disadvantage because a lot of <laughs> it is. I mean, you you miss out on something because your life takes you someplace else. And you just never get around to go back to it because you're too busy doing other stuff. And so if you miss stuff like that, you might just miss it. And with a lot of the Justice League, I just missed it. Mm. I missed a big chunk of it. I saw the very end of Justice oh, League. Justice League, uh, what was it? The television uh, show. The, but what, what, you mean the end or the end of the... The second iteration was like Justice League Unlimited or something like that. Yeah, whatever it was. That I one. remember. Yeah, because that one does have an ending. That has yeah, that, a, that has an official ending. Conscious last that. last episode yeah. where all the heroes are running down the steps of the Hall of Justice, mm -hmm. which they gave. They didn't have the Hall of Justice in the first run of the Justice League cartoon, but they in the second one they did, which is neat because my beloved Super Friends had the Hall of Justice. Right. I love that show so much. Just, the, the original Super Friends. Oh God, I loved it so much. Just, just so much. I loved how the uh, the old, you know, MGM announcer guy who does the the voiceovers mm -hmm. obviously had no idea who these characters were at all. And so when it came time to produce to pr pronounce their names, he just pronounced Batman's name as if he were, you know, an oncologist from the Upper West Side. He calls him Batman. <laughs> Batman, his office, and his office ward, Robin. <laughs> yeah, Doctor Batman. I loved it that I, that Wonder Woman was in it first of all, and that she's she's not just a secretary. That was great because I had to put up with decades of that in Justice League, mm -hmm. where she was there to be a secretary. <laughs> and I love you know Superman saying stopping trains is my specialty. And lines like that just but but the Justice League the later cartoon is terrific, absolutely terrific. 
Uh, but uh, that you mentioned uh, earlier on something we're running out of time here. You mentioned something earlier on that I wanted to get to, which is of course the Arrowverse shows. Mm-hmm. Which and I think assuming the most people who watch this, that's their their comic book on TV entry point is that that which is understandable. System. Yeah, because Arrow is actually a pretty important comic book show if you think about it because arrow which started off just as a green arrow show which and i remember seeing the the preview for that for arrow and i said god this looks like it's gonna suck nobody's gonna watch this show uh i underestimated that show and so that show ended up being very important because they ended up being able to put in all of these other dc characters and it worked and so they just did that more and more and they were like you know we could this is working people like this stuff you know and they were able to branch off and make all of these other shows one show after another one after another and they would do their team up once a year and it would be a bigger and bigger team up every year and no matter what you might think of the individual shows themselves and the quality of the shows that's pretty important yeah and that that was kind of groundbreaking so i'm, I'm i've got one eye on the clock here because we're running out of time but do, it, i agree completely so what's your estimate of why that bubble burst what's your, what what would be if you had to guess what would be your reason for the fact that in the year we won't have any of the Arrowverse? it seems like something would just spawn and spawn and spawn forever like the marvel cinematic universe is it superhero burnout or is it there might be there might be some of that a lot of there's the problem with this show these shows that you have with the marvel movies for example where unlike in comic books the actors get older and they can only do this for so long and they're only going to want to do this for so long and that's happening on that happens on these shows the same way it happens in these films, right? We, we've, we don't have Captain America in the movies anymore. We lost Arrow for the same reason. Uh, Supergirl left because, you know, eventually, you know, a 35 year old Supergirl, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And so, and there is a bit of burnout on those shows. Mm. The, there's a recycling and you can only do the same stuff so, so long. And they, they kind of been doing that. Uh, I and bet so I think the, uh, the yeah. flash star Grant Gustin. I bet he was a part of him was maybe hoping that he would make the transition to the big screen. But unbelievably, the latest reporting seems to indicate that the studio is sticking with Ezra Miller. It just seems unbelievable to me. But when they've got a, literally a standby flash, literally waiting, <laughs> and they're still going to stick with this kid, I don't get that at all. I really don't. Yeah, it's not like he's such a big box office draw that they no, no. go. Yeah, I, I don't understand that either. There must be some contract thing involved, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know if a contract that strong, what kind of a contract extends past a felony accusation? And I mean, the, the critics of Ezra Miller have said, if you bring him back to reshoot scenes for The Flash, what you are doing is guaranteeing that sometime shortly before during or immediately after the premiere of the movie he kills somebody <laughs> and then what do you, then what do you do which is more expensive for you <laughs> to recast a few scenes now or or to or to be in court in 20 yeah but i don't i don't understand any decisions that warner brothers makes so <laughs> it's it's hard to know we can only guess i so the arrowverse arrowverse died it's dying yeah, and when it was a certified hit, it was huge. It was, and they could have kept it going, and they could have just put in a bunch of new shows. Yeah, uh, they they could or have even rebooted the old ones. You could you could reboot Arrow. Say you know, this is a younger Ollie Queen. Yeah, fans would accept that. They, yeah. but they didn't do it. Is mm-hmm. it is it just that these shows got too expensive? That's possible. Maybe maybe they weren't getting them as much back for what they were putting into them. But this is also a time when there's a million shows of this type, mm-hmm. right? And you've got Disney plus with these bigger budgeted shows that are basically movies that are also television shows. 
you've got stuff like that. You've got a million things to watch on Netflix. A lot of them fantasy and horror related, yeah. which these, which fans of these shows are going to watch. It could be that viewers just dropped out. Yeah, a friend of mine in the industry says, when I, when I ask her this question, she just blankly says, when I say what killed superheroes on TV, she says Westeros did. And I'm just supposed to fill in the blanks. <laughs> so, yeah. and then, why, you know, if, if, you, if you, you give them a choice, viewers a choice between a cartoon that's a soap opera and something every bit as fantastic that's more adult, they'll, they'll go for the more adult stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's true, <laughs> but what would be in the, we have two minutes left. What would be your uh, ideal project? Do you have an ideal project for a small screen comic book adaptation? Is there anything you wish they would do? I'm assuming that you have either never watched or completely blanked out the live action half hour Saturday morning Conan. <laughs> oh, don't bring that up. <laughs> no. don't, don't bring up any of the Conans. Of course, <laughs> a good Conan show would be excellent. Wouldn't it, though? Yeah. That would be wonderful if they would do it and do it right. As far as comic book shows, that's tough because I feel like so much has been done. I mean, I would still like to see a, a serious Batman show about Batman done the way Batman should be yeah. on television would be good. And I think people would watch it. Um, if they do a show about Superman, they can do a show about Batman, you know. Um, instead, they gave us that terrible Batwoman, which might be one of the reasons the Arrowverse has died. <laughs> the Arrowverse has died. That one show might have done it on its own. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are a lot of superhero characters. So many of them you can do if you just do them right. Yeah. Um, Adam, it's Strange. It's, Adam Strange would make a heck of a show. He time. would make a heck of a show. Yeah. But only we know who he is, so. <laughs> yes. uh, and our four viewers on Wednesday. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to run out of time here. This thing is going to cut us off. I hate it when it cuts me off in mid-sentence. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> let's, let's just wrap it up. There's so much more ground to cover. But we'll just wrap it up. Uh, thank you very much for the, for the diagnosis of the superheroes on the small screen. So much more to cover, but we'll, uh, we'll have other times. We can do a part two. <laughs> we'll do a part two. Yeah. Movies and TV. All right. It's a date. <laughs> okay. I'm available anytime Sunday. So just let me know. All right. Thank you kindly. <laughs> <laughs>